Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. Today I have the pleasure of a rather youngish looking Professor Subhash Kak. Uh, Professor Subhash Kak, you look splendid with your mustache. Welcome to P Guru's channel. Uh, thank you. Uh, great to be uh, on the channel and I'll tell you the story of the mustache in a minute. Yeah, please, please go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was riding a van north of Mumbai and the passengers did not have seat belts. And our van was involved in a smash up and I needed a few stitches in my upper lip. And so I could not shave my upper lip, which is why I have a mustache. <laughs> and now I've slightly gotten fond of it. Oh, so nice, nice. the challenge is when do I take it off? Yes, yes. No, no, you look very nice with that. It's, uh, it's uh, 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 as we grow older, if it becomes totally white, then it kind of makes you look like that Hamlog's. Uh, you know, father character in that uh, Hamlo <laughs> series. <laughs> so this is this is very nice. Okay, so I'm I'm sorry, viewers. I have not told you what we are going to talk about. Uh, first off, the background is that of the dancing Nataraja in front of the CERN building, C E R N. Um, and uh, the reason I had this is to give you some context about what we are going to talk today. It is about a tweet that Professor Kak put out a few days ago where he was suggesting that some computer science subjects ought to be taught in Sanskrit. I'm, I'm sure he has thought it through as to how much Sanskrit the students have to learn first before they can understand um, the, uh, la the, the, the subjects of uh, computer science. So we will, uh, we will allow Professor uh, uh, Kark to explain uh, his thought. Sir, take away. This is, it's your floor now. Okay, uh, there are two uh, sides to uh, this question. One is we do want uh, Sanskrit to be more popular in India because Sanskrit yes. is the vehicle of India's classical uh, knowledge, uh, literatures, insights into philosophy and in the Shastras, yes. sciences as well. Uh, the second is that uh, the way Sanskrit is taught in India mostly is uh, emphasizes uh, the past. Yes. Now, for a language to be living, it's got to keep on playing Evolving with time and, in yes. current life. Yes. And it also has to have a way for the graduates coming from the Sanskrit programs to find jobs. Now, I think there could be many fits. One great fit for people who do, let's say, BA in Sanskrit would be that if they're also taught three or four courses in computer science, for example, databases, some basic programming, maybe Python, uh, some graphics, uh, they would be able to find jobs in most IT companies because as a wit has said, not just IT companies, most jobs anywhere these days in the modern world uh, deal with the uh, Excel spreadsheet. So if you can do Excel spreadsheet and you also know Sanskrit, you have a certain aesthetics, you approach uh, your uh, problems with a sense of beauty, you would be a winner. And I just for the sake of uh, uh, the world, understand why this hasn't been done. I think um, um, what a BA uh, in Sanskrit would then be equivalent to would be a BA in uh, liberal studies, yes. uh, in liberal arts in the US, which is what generates or prepares most of the leaders, not just in politics and law, but also in technology and sciences. People don't know that a lot of people in science and technology do not have science and technology degrees in the US, but rather liberal arts degrees. I think this is needed very, very badly, and we can't just wait for the world to change. India has to take charge of all of these issues by itself, and uh, doesn't need too many resources. In fact, uh, I was um, um, apprised of a very sad story, this Maharaja College of Sanskrit in Vijayanagaram, which has only one student and one teacher. It's a lovely building. Uh, it was all over the internet last week. Why have we allowed things to slide to this position? And uh, why not also encourage, as some people have wonderfully done, uh, songs in Sanskrit. But now I know that there are some um, Sanskrit supporters in India are very orthodox and conservative. They say, no, we should not be doing this. I think they're wrong. We should make Sanskrit uh, live again 
uh, full of, uh, you know, uh, full of life energy once again. And um, uh, in addition to computer science, maybe something on design could also be included, one or two courses. In fact, uh, uh, there is a, a trend all over the world to uh, introduce universities of design. Singapore, for example, is a university of design because most of the value addition that takes place in products, in software, is at the higher end where uh, questions of beauty and aesthetics come in. And India, I, I believe, even through its powerhouse IT companies, is still at the lower end. I was talking to a friend uh, in Delhi just last week who knows many people in the IT world in Israel. And his Israeli friend was telling him that, look, wh why isn't India scaling up, going up to the higher end and, uh, and, and, and doing the kind of things that Israel is doing? So to come back, I think it's a great opportunity. But uh, leaders back in India, leaders of education, of Sanskrit, need to seize this opportunity and introduce um, some courses. You know, they'll have to do some thinking about it, how best to do it, how best to prepare students, and then market it. Let uh, Sanskrit be not just a, a, a program to learn grammar, but a program to open the doorways into dynamic life, you know, to prepare oneself for all kinds of things, creativity, arts, and leadership in all kinds of fields. Now, um, uh, Professor Kak, I just want to tell our viewers, many of you may be saying, ah, it's very difficult to use Sanskrit now. It is not, you know, there is not enough people, resources, and so on. All of you must remember that when in 1948, Israel was formed, Hebrew was almost a dead language, except spoken by perhaps a few rabbis. And from that point forward, when they formed the country where people from all over the world came in to stay and live there, they said that first we need to establish the language that we are going to communicate with each other. The entire nation learned a new language. This is, this is I'm talking about millions and people who were in the West, in the East, in the South, everywhere. They all came in. They learned Hebrew. They had to learn. So we are not saying, India is not... Uh, Professor Kak and I are not saying that everybody must learn uh, Sanskrit today, but this is an opportunity because what has been found is, uh, Professor Kak, if you will indulge me, I'll give an example of one application that has been uh, found that requires Sanskrit as the uh, medium for translation. In the future, and this is already in some labs, supposing there is a person who you want to converse with, you are a Hindi speaking person and the other person is a Chinese speaking person, then you should be able to speak in Hindi to him and he should be able to listen to you in Chinese, this translation happening in real time. For something like that to happen, what has to be done is Hindi gets translated into basic phonetics and, and expression in Sanskrit. And from there, it goes from there to Chinese because Sanskrit is the only language that they have found that can capture the essence of what is required in terms of phonetics, uh, uh, enunciation. I'm, I may not be fully clear, but perhaps uh, uh, Professor Kath knows a little bit more about it. Have you heard of that experiment that happened in Microsoft, sir, a few years ago? Well, I do know about um, this idea that maybe Sanskrit has some very special um, capacities and properties, but that's called Shastric Sanskrit. That's mm. not ordinary Sanskrit. So we are not necessarily talking of everybody learning Sanskrit. We are saying, why not Sanskrit also have an opportunity to become a natural vehicle mm -hmm. to communicate India's deep wisdoms in all kinds of fields. And young people need to know that. Young people need to be dedicated to a spirit of excellence because what is lacking, and you see this when you go back to India, is that, hey, why aren't things being done beautifully? You go to Japan. I came back uh, via Tokyo. When you, you come to Japan and you find that the Japanese have a great dedication to excellence, you know, not just in Ikebana, in the way they make their gardens. And India had it too, but India has been separated from its uh, spirit of excellence. And we don't want Sanskrit to replace any language. We want Sanskrit also to have a, a proper place 
in the college education so that those who are interested uh, in being connected to it and being connected to this amazing uh, river of wisdom would be able to do it in a proper way, not where uh, their interest in the language is dulled just by memorizing grammar, because we are not talking of language, we are talking of language as a vehicle, because somebody could very rightly say, okay, uh, Sanskrit is one language, there are 100 other languages, so uh, there are so many things to be done in life, so we don't have time to do it. So what we are saying is that, no, what we, are, what we want you to do is to learn this, to get connected to this amazing wisdom, which is still valuable because uh, the cutting edge of science uh, leads us to this uh, puzzle of consciousness, which is where India is still ahead of all other cultures. So if you want to do that, and we can use that to hone our insights, and those insights would help us in our scientific research, in our business, in our creativity as artists, as dancers, and everything else. So why not do it? And, and uh, you, you're absolutely right, Professor Kark. I do a couple of, I do try to do a couple of things. Whenever I'm on debates or in wherever public speaking engagements, I try to introduce one line of Sanskrit and then try to expand around that why I'm saying that. Because somehow we need to, like, if you take any Indian language today, there's a preponderance of English in there. A lot of it. And, and I, it's almost like we are incapable of making up one sentence without English in it. So this needs to change or you can keep what you want, but try to start introducing Sanskrit in your daily usage. And, and believe it or not, we do use those words. We just don't know what we are using, but we need to kind of try to bring out the reason, the right word for the right expression. And that makes a big, big difference. Also speaking on aesthetics, uh, Professor Kak, I was uh, in my recent trip to India, I was passing through Paris and, and there is just one terminal in Paris the entire place where all the shops are, it's like an atrium where you are sitting in the middle and there are lots of shops around. All of them were using only three colors, black, white, and gray for their entire design. It looked so stunningly beautiful. They weren't even using colors. They were just using black, white, and gray. It was stunning. Stunning is all I could say. And so so there, what I'm trying to say is even that, that attention to detail that goes a long way in uh, you know expressing how much you are what you are as a person. We have to seek that higher uh, ground where we want to always pursue perfection. So you are absolutely right, Professor Kart. So now you are part of some advisory boards in Indian government, aren't you? Do you think you can try and get this thing seated in the right places? Well, I think, uh, well, my advisory board is in science and technology. This is not um, a problem of science and technology. This is really a problem of education. And I think... Uh, while uh, many uh, grassroots uh, groups uh, or efforts in India have done wonderful work, like Sanskrit Bharati is one of them, we need more of it. We need people to get uh, movers and shakers in India together. Uh, Indian higher education system, as also in the West, is facing unprecedented challenges because of technology, because of AI, and uh, there are uh, predictions that half the universities in America itself are going to go bankrupt. Indian universities will have the same problems. People need to get down, sit down, and say, okay, just doing math, science, and technology is not enough. The world is much more complex. Future, the future world is going to be even more complex. You need liberal arts. You need other uh, aspects of wisdom to help one navigate through this world, to help one deal with uh, uh, diversity, um, not just in one's own country, but on the globe. And therefore, what we need uh, are uh, new liberal art colleges, not liberal art colleges which copy the West, because that model is also failing. But in a new liberal arts uh, college model, which doesn't reject the West, which embraces the greatest in the West and embraces the greatest in India and puts something together where I believe Sanskrit could play an important role. We don't say that you have to have these colleges in Sanskrit. They, they can have all modern languages and Indian languages. But Sanskrit as a vehicle which has served India for at least four or 5,000 years, unprecedented. 
there's nothing like this anywhere else on globe we need to use its power as somebody said our forefathers our purvajas have gave us a jet plane and we are still insisting on riding a bullock cart why you know and uh, the jet plane is parked at the back and we are sort of pushing it back and forth and we're not using it at all we we need to wake up and and make use of that amazing inheritance that we have and change the world in the process such profound thoughts thank you so much professor kak we'll be back with more such interesting conversations thanks for watching p guru's channel and please do not forget to subscribe also we are requesting you to donate to our website we are trying to grow as a uh, um, as a company we are trying to get more languages online one of the things one of my dreams is to have p guru's version in sanskrit sanskrit.pguru's.com and uh, it's well i can write that the only thing is i need an audience to read it i'm hoping that through this medium that more and more people get interested in pursuing sanskrit and we'll be very happy to have our version of sanskrit uh, website thank you very much professor kar thank you thank you very much